Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave from Evil Eye Games. In today's video, I want to go ahead and I want to talk about a couple of things when it comes to programming languages that I think are very helpful to understand when trying to create games. Now, Unreal Engine 4 and underlying it, C++, the first thing we have to recognize is that these are object-based languages. Now, in order to identify what an object is, we're going to take a look real fast at programming before object-based languages. And prior to object-based languages, we had scripted languages. Now, scripted languages still exist, and there's still some really good uses for them. Basically, anything web-based is a script-based language, so HTML, CSS, PHP, stuff like that, those are all script-based languages. But prior to object-oriented languages, we only had script-based languages. And basically what a script-based language does is you would write a series of lines of code, and it would execute those lines of code in order that you put them in. So basically, it was just like a task list, and it went straight down the list and followed those tasks. Now, there were definitely ways to get around moving around your task list. You could jump to different lines and get things to happen in a different order. But script-based languages, especially for more complex programs, required an incredible amount of foresight and designing prior to actually writing the code. Now, that's not to say with object-oriented languages you shouldn't plan ahead, but with script-based languages, you pretty much had to plan out most everything ahead of time. So what exactly is an object? Well, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to keep it very simple. A object is basically a self-contained piece of code that describes something. So here on the screen, I have a little diagram that I put together, and we have a Blueprint object and a C++ object. Inside of each of those objects, they each have a function, and they each have a variable. And a function is basically just a way to make something happen, and a variable is just a storage container for some sort of data. Now, a function outside of UE4 uh, would be commonly referred to as a method. So if you ever see the term method, method is pretty much synonymous with a function. So when we go into Unreal Engine, and we create a new Blueprint object, or we create a new C++ object, we're basically creating these files, and they have descriptors on things that we can do, such as functions, and an amount of data that it keeps track of, like variables. And this leads us into the discussion on what a class is. When you go ahead and create one of these files, that is what the class is. So if I were to take this Blueprint object here, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it down here, and let's call our file rolling pin. Just something that stands out that we can easily identify. So once we create this file rolling pin, rolling pin is a class. And a class is basically any of the objects that we create. So rolling pin right here is going to be a class that we have created. So if we ever want to go looking for a specific class, we can look for the class rolling pin. Now the other neat thing about UE4 and the way C++ works with it is that we can derive blueprint objects from C++ objects. So we can go ahead and we can create a blueprint based object that is based on a C++ object. And this is going to be what we call a parent-child relationship. And the way a parent-child relationship works is we have a parent, the C++ object, and then we create a blueprint based off of our C++ object. So the C++ is going to be the parent object, and the blueprint is going to be the child. And what a parent-child relationship essentially means is the child will go ahead and inherit anything that the parent has. So in this case, if we have a C++ object with function A and variable A, and we create a child object in a blueprint, without actually doing anything to the blueprint, the blueprint will automatically inherit function A and variable A as well. Now, I have another chart over here where I'm talking about parent objects and child objects. And another neat thing that we can do 
with parent and child objects is that we can go ahead and add to the child objects without affecting the parent. So say we have this parent object right here. It comes with function A and variable A. And we create a child of the parent object. It will automatically inherit function A and variable A. But say we want to add more functionality to the child object without changing the parent object. What we can do is we can actually write code in our child object that goes ahead and adds more functions or more variables to the child. And the parent will not inherit these functions or variables whatsoever. So whatever changes we make to the child do not affect the parent. And the last chart that I have over here actually talks about the way this parent-child relationship works within Unreal Engine 4. And there's already a parent-child relationship with certain classes that already exist that are commonly used within Unreal Engine. In the C++ coding for Unreal Engine 4, there is a base object that we have on the left here. Now, this isn't the actual way that this object is set up, but I'm just using it as an example to explain how this works. So in our base Unreal Engine 4 object, we'll have functions and we'll have variables. And then when you go to create a new blueprint inside of Unreal Engine, it gives you a list of things that you can create. For example, an actor, a pawn, or a character. Now the actor actually derives from this base UE4 object. So whatever the UE4 object has, the actor has. Likewise, the pawn class is a derivation of our actor class. So the pawn, being a child of the actor, inherits everything that the actor has, which inherits from the UE4 object. Finally, we have a character class. And once again, the character class adds functionality to our pawn. So our character inherits everything that our pawn has. Our pawn inherits everything from our actor. And our actor inherits everything from our original UE4 object. But at each point, these different classes add something to the previous class without affecting the previous class. And the last thing I want to actually talk about is instancing. And what exactly instancing is. Well, when we're actually writing the code and creating these classes, we're not actually spawning something into memory. So when we run the program at runtime, say we have this blueprint object right here, and we want to call this blueprint object into existence. What's going to happen is the program will go ahead and allot some space within our temporary memory, and it will go ahead and put the necessary code in that temporary memory and actually bring our object into existence within the program. And this is creating an instance of our class. And instancing is also useful when we want to create multiple copies of the same object. So say, for example, we have a fence, and we line up three tin cans up on the fence. And the player is going to go ahead and shoot at those three tin cans. What we want to happen is when the player shoots the first can, the first can falls over. But we don't want that first can to be dependent on the other two cans, or those other cans to be dependent on the first can. So when we actually create things into memory, if we want to create another copy of this object, the engine is going to go ahead and allot some space in our temporary memory for a second copy of the object. So if something happens to the first copy of the object, or the first instance of the object, it's not going to go ahead and affect the second instance of the object. So if this first blueprint here goes ahead and gets deleted for some reason, it exits existence, the second instance here will continue to exist and it won't be dependent on that first instance. And this is also helpful from a programming standpoint for efficiency. We don't have to go ahead and a lot ahead of time everything that will ever be created in the game. What instancing allows us to do is bring things into existence when we need them. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys and gives you a little bit of insight into how Unreal Engine 4 works and how object-oriented languages work. I wanted to keep this brief and very general 
we don't need to go explicitly into details to understand the exact machinations of the engine, but it's helpful to understand how this works when you're going ahead and creating programs. So if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them down below, or you can head over to my Facebook page, which I will leave a link to below as well. And of course, guys, thanks for watching.